ahead and get started. All right, so I am recording. So welcome everyone to our March <laughs> Town Hall. So we've got a lot to cover. Um, we're going to be talking about technology tools to grow your business. So we're going to start with Ad, the team from Adplor are here, and there's a lot that they're going to be covering. We've done, we're then going to do, we're going to talk about HubSpot and um, Actually, Pratt's going to do that today. Uh, but if you if you guys are using HubSpot or a different CRM, I think that's an important conversation we need to have. I think more and more people are using HubSpot. Um, so we're going to talk about that and have a demo. Um, I'm then going to go over some tools that, that I've actually, I, Bert and I were at the uh, IFA conference in Vegas along with uh, Ryan and 4,000 other people. So we will be uh, sharing some of those things, but then we'll open it up. To, are there some tools that you guys are using? And um, love to learn more. Um, now, I don't think she's been on a call, but we've got Aaron. I see you. Are you on, Aaron? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Uh, is this, I don't, I think this is your first call, right? It is. Okay. So, Aaron. Ogren and her mom, Michelle, are our newest franchisees. Do you want to introduce yourself and tell us a bit about your, you know, yourself and where you're located? Sure. Um, my mom, Michelle, is not able to join today. She had a doctor's conflict. But um, hi, I'm Erin. We joined in mid-February, or I should say signed in mid-February mid and been getting our training up to date. Um, we are going to be based north of Tampa, so right marrying Liliana and Teresa um, in what we're calling the Nature Coast. So you, if you know anything about Florida, um, we're thinking it, it's Ocala, it's Citrus County, um, it's the villages, and then some surrounding areas in between. So we both have a background in sales and marketing at the corporate and agency levels. And we're excited to be here. Awesome. Welcome. We are glad to have you as well. So our, our first franchisee of the year, and they'll be going through training later this month and uh, look forward to getting you up and running. All right. So let's go ahead and, and get started. People keep joining. Here's Bert. He's uh, late getting to class. So um I'm going to go through the first ad floors on. So we're going to cover them. They've given me um, some 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 history and some data and, and some pre for the presentation. And so I've put this. They've not seen this. So they they created this, but they haven't seen the slide deck. So Ryan, do you want to go through this? So I guess the first thing is we took a look at. Um, People who are advertising, uh, are, and these are all advertising with Adplor, is that correct? That's correct, but there's uh, additional people that are also advertising. Um, and so we just wanted to make sure that the people that we were uh, taking in, in this example here, we you know, know and, and we've got a, a good grasp on what they're doing with their campaigns. Um, so I, I'm sure there's some other people that may not be on this list, but... Okay. Uh, Everyone well, we really wanted to get an idea of who's advertising, and, and we're not picking on anyone, but this is just who's not advertising with, with uh, you know, with you guys. I don't think they're advertising at all right now. And so we wanted to have an idea of, you know, reasons you should do a program like this. So you want to walk through the first slide? Ryan? Sure, yeah. So the graph that we're looking at here, uh, this is pulled out of uh, Google Analytics, which is just showing website traffic. Um, and the blue line are uh, the locations that are actively advertising. And the orange line are people that um, we believe are not actively advertising. And really the the explanation and the, the difference here is just saying, you know, even if you are running a, a you know, 300, 500, 600 dollar campaign on Google or Facebook or um, next door, really, you know, whatever these channels are, um, just showing how much more uh, website traffic uh, you're getting from doing that advertising, but also just um, how you know th this is not only clicks from ads; it's it's overall traffic from social media, from organic, from uh, email, and and the like, and so. Uh, it's just showing that, you know, when you're really 
you know, investing and getting your word out there uh, and getting your name out there, you can see the, the, the difference here and just how much more website traffic they're getting. And then you've got another one here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a similar graph, uh, just in a, a bit of a bar chart format. So you can kind of see um, the, the difference there. It, it's about on average, um, you know, from this date range that we're looking at here, which I believe was May of last year through uh, February of uh, this year. Um, it's roughly about a 200% uh, difference between uh, overall traffic on um, who's advertising and who's not advertising, just the total amount of traffic that they're getting to their website. Um, so again, it's just an encouragement to say, you know, when you're, when you're looking at, um, you know, your book of business and you're saying, how do we get more leads? How do we get more eyeballs on our business? Um, people that are advertising, they're getting about 200% more traffic uh, to, to their specific websites there. And I'll just tell you, our corporate office, we started advertising in January on uh, for franchise development, franchise sales. And so we've got Aaron found us through a Google search. And so, I mean, it does work. And uh, the goal is to send people to these beautiful new web websites you have. And, you know, it's, it's not like it's going to replace realtor referrals. You know, that's still probably your most powerful thing. But combined with your marketing here, I think it's, it's definitely a core thing that you, you should be looking at. Um, let's see. So this is, you said there, these six are around 28 and around a third of our, our total web traffic. So, mm -hmm. and then... Yeah, and this last note here, this is more just saying, you know, when we're looking at where do lead, like where do website leads come from? You know, what source do they come from? Facebook, do they come from Instagram? Do they come from Google? If on any of these platforms, is it paid? Is it organic? Um, from what we're seeing uh, from the analytics, about half of the website conversions come from Google. And that's a mixture of some paid, some organic, some of the uh, Google business profile traffic, but it really, it's, it's one of those things where, um, you know, you want to make sure that you think about Google because it is such a huge driver of traffic. You want to think about it, um, almost like real estate on, on that search engine result page and say, how do we make sure that, um, our name is at the top in the ads, in the maps, in the middle, and then organically, um, in the, uh, the normal results and, and taking up as much real estate as possible there both so that um, you have more opportunity to be in front of that customer who is is trying to pick somebody to do their home staging or um, an additional service that you provide but also to you know on another note keep your competitors off the page as well because uh, the more times you're showing up on that page the less times you know your competition is there and just i want to make sure everyone understands define organic traffic what that means specifically yeah, it's, it's really something to, to, there's three different sections really to kind of break down on um, the Google search page. You've got the paid advertising section at the top. You have the map listings in the middle. Um, maps can sometimes also be looped into organic, but when we say organic, we mean um, the just the normal free uh, clickable links uh, that are on the Google page there. You know, if you type in home stagers near me or home staging companies near me, you'll probably see, you know, maybe like a Yelp link or um, something from House. You'll hopefully see the Show Homes website uh, pop up down there. That is something that we we can't, you know, pay to play for. You have to rank organically, um, hence the name there, for those spots. But, um, you know, that's something where, you know, corporate is, is you know, really focused on getting you guys to um, as high as possible in the organic section, but then on the maps, um, that's something where, you know, driving more reviews for your listing is really going to be the primary thing you guys can do. And then at the very top section with the ads, that's something that um, if you're investing in uh, paying for those clicks and, and being at the top of the page there, and that's how you take up that section of that real estate. Okay, awesome. And then the last piece... Uh, yeah, last piece, just that real estate idea of, you know, think about the the Google page, um, you know, like you've, you're you trying to put a, a stake in the ground of, you know, okay, we've, uh, we own this part, we own this part, and we own this part. And 
best case scenario best case scenario is that you're showing up in all three sections um but you know even two out of three is good but um, if you're not showing up at all then that's something to uh you know reach out to us we can definitely um advise and, and help point you in the right direction of uh, what we might uh need to do or to need to look at but then again best case scenario is that you are uh dominating and showing up in all three of those uh real estate pieces okay awesome so I put this slide in together uh just to to kind of put it all together rather so you've got keywords social media email campaigns like a lot of you are doing email um doesn't really have it on here specifically I guess satisfying search and <laughs> But like reviews are, I would think reviews are a pretty core piece for your your rankings and things like that, correct? With the algorithm, absolutely. Yeah, reviews is one of the the biggest things that um, you guys can do, and it's something where, um, you know, in, in some businesses we we see, you know, if you're able to generate that review, that might even turn into a referral for um, the next job. Uh, that you're able to go do you know if you say hey if you were really satisfied with what we did do you have any friends or do you know anyone um who you think we would uh, be able to work with and so it, it helps both from um an organic ranking perspective but also uh can help drive just referrals and, and additional business in that sense too so if i want to rank you know clearly you want to be on the first page and really the first bold, as they say, you want to be as, as high up as possible. And what we have found is, I guess it's home staging and city has been one of the big ones. Um, what are what are the core things that they are, you know, that we need to be looking at? I would think is, you know, you hear a lot about content is king. They should be adding, you know, blog content and just new copy, et cetera. But what would you say the top three or so things are? The franchisees could do to help the rankings yeah from uh from an organic perspective um we've already covered it but reviews is is probably one of the biggest ones um secondly i'd say uh every time you all are uh staging a home or, or doing a job uh, and you're taking all those pictures and you're you're investing a lot into um you know building out your portfolio portfolio share that stuff on the website and also share that stuff on on social um, if you're not already, um, that stuff helps drive um, additional eyeballs and, and additional traffic to the website. Um, and then lastly, I think you guys already said you're uh, doing a bit of this, but, you know, email campaigns, uh, other types of campaigns you might be running, even these paid advertising campaigns that we were talking about, the more traffic that we can send to uh, the website, the the better that uh, Google and other search engines are going to see um you know this is a popular brand this is a popular uh place for people to to go for home staging there uh you know from a, a corporate slash website building perspective it, there's a lot of like technical stuff that uh is, is being done on the back end of the website um but if you're you know the, the franchisee and you're saying what can i do uh these are some examples um this map actually that uh you've got up here this is something that if you haven't seen a map like this get with becky from our team and she can help pull one for you um, but this is basically a, a report that we can run where we can say organically when someone is searching for um, a particular keyword, I think in this case it was home staging, um, uh, where is your business ranking um, across the, the the grid here um, of the map? So, you know, you're you're not necessarily just limited to one physical storefront. You guys service a larger area. And so you'll see here in some places there, you know, this is uh, Coral Gables um, is the example here. They're ranking, you know, one, two, and three um, in uh, most of their territory, but there's a little small section you'll see here where they're ranking number four, actually. And so that's just uh, something to know about and something to um, be able to visualize with these types of reports. And um, we can, you know, if, if you want to reach out to Becky and, and, and our team and um, we can help advise and uh, point you in the right direction of you know what can be done to to make sure that this is as green as possible across the the entire map. And so, just you may want to explain to people what we do with the ad fund as far as you know 
we pay for you guys to to do the Google listings or, or the the, li the listing directories mm -hmm. as well as the Google My Business. Do you want to kind of walk through that so they're clear on it? Absolutely. So you know, one of these uh, essential pieces to being found online and also making sure that when you're found, the information is correct is uh, managing your your listings profiles. Um, probably the biggest one is is the Google Business Profile listing, and that's the the Google Maps listing for you guys. Um, but there's all kinds of other listings um, across different directories, uh, and and you know we've got uh, a tool that helps us um, update it in one place, and then it spreads it out to all the the major directories for you guys uh, to make sure that you know things like your phone number are correct. You know if somebody wants to call you and they find let's say they find you on. Um, I don't know if they if they are happen, happening to use Bing because Bing is maybe making a comeback right now. Uh, if they find you on Bing, is your phone number correct or is it an old phone number that you're not using anymore? Um, we uh, we keep all that information up to date for you guys. Uh, make sure that it's uh, good to go across the board. It helps with your organic rankings, um, but also just make sure that um, you know you're able to to win as many leads as possible here. So. And they should be adding, I mean, part of what you do are, you know, for the people you work with, are you adding Google photos to their Google business profiles monthly as well or regularly? Uh, Becky can probably talk to that a little bit uh, better than I can, but um, I know that, yes, for a lot of the locations, um, we'll coordinate with them to uh, make sure that they've got uh, their pictures uploaded on the profiles. Um, Becky, I, I know you reached out to a couple people on that, and I know there's like some people that have specific photos they want versus like the sort of corporate photos. Are there any comments or anything you want to add there? Yeah, so I do have um, those localized photos from a few locations. Um, for those that never sent them over, um, we've got you guys down just to receive the corporate photos, which are lovely, of course. But if you want to advertise your particular um, photos from the work that you particularly do, just send me a link to a Google Drive um, with your photos in it, and I'll I'll add that into the into the um, the list for the posting. So I think that's pretty important. I, I, <laughs> this is such a, an individual design look, but also regional looks. So I don't know if you know, you know, Miami, for example, would want pictures from. California and vice versa. So uh, definitely get with with Becky, you know, on that. Um, hey, Marissa, are you on? Can you uh, can you unmute for a second? Uh, what's the email address for Becky? Hi. Yes. Hi. Hi, Matt. Hey. So Becky will put her address in here. So looking at this map, one of the things just as I look at it, um, you are number one in Coral Gables, which you own, and just so people are aware, you own Coral Gables for like 12 years and you bought Miami like a year ago. As a, That's correct. So <laughs> almost. I guess, two. I guess one of the questions, um, I don't think we market you as show homes Miami. So is that, is that because right now you just have one website for Coral Gables? Is that right? That's correct. I'm not sure if I have the Miami one i think it all i think it all like transfers to the coral gables one mm -hmm. <clears throat> i think it in, i think eventually i just want to become show homes miami because it's it's a broader city um but i guess but, that's a that's a question and i know we're going to touch on this in a second but is, is that something we should be looking at for you know for this specific example keywords and just marketing in general because if someone is searching it if i don't know if i don't if i'm moving to miami i wouldn't be looking up coral gables if i didn't know that if, I, if i'd never been there mm -hmm. so i believe when uh we merge those things i believe right now it's set up where uh if you go to slash miami it forwards everything over to coral gables um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, from an SEO perspective, we're transferring the the sort of SEO value over to Coral Gables in that sense. Um, but really, it's it's one of those things where, you know, depending on everybody's situation, it's going to be a little bit different. You know, if we're, we're in Atlanta, Georgia, um, personally here, but, you know, if you're going to talk about Buckhead versus Decatur, if you are familiar with the area, they're 
adjacent to each other, but they're very different areas. And and even if you're talking about a little bit farther apart, saying you know Buckhead and Stone Mountain, very very different areas. Uh, and so um, it definitely does have uh, an impact, and it's something where um, everyone's situation is going to be a bit unique. So uh, if you have any questions on that, again, reach out to us. We'd be happy to to walk through you know what makes the most sense for uh, your location on you know what keywords to be focusing in on. Um, as well as, you know, if there's any like city terms or things like that to focus in on. Okay. Well, I would just, I think that's probably something just to have an offline discussion, but um, Marissa, I also wanted you to maybe share a bit about your ads. Um, you you spent a lot of time with the app floor guys updating and tweaking your ads in the last year or so, correct? Yes, that's true. So yeah. can you kind of walk us through that journey and kind of how you went through that and what it looks like today? And how um, going? Sure. I mean, what we, what, you know, I think um, we just spend a lot of time um, just kind of reviewing our, our pictures and reviewing our, our keywords and playing with those and, you know, adding, deleting and trying to see what works best for us. Um, Melanie, she's she she handles all this. So she, I'm actually texting her now. She can jump on the call, but she's the one that handles all this part. But we also find that when we upload new pictures into Google, we start like the phone starts ringing again. Um. So I do think people. I don't think. Google ads captures every lead because I kind of feel like people maybe they go to our website and then you know because we we get a lot of leads but I'm not sure they're all captured like you know they don't all necessarily call you from the ad um, but when I ask how'd you find me they always say oh I Google or online um, so I think it's something that it requires interaction on your part in order for you to stay like on the top of the list. Um, so this isn't a set it and forget it. I mean, you need to- No, this is not a set it and forget it. I, it, it, I, I no, not for me. I, otherwise it just kind of, kind of when we forget about it, it kind of fizzles out and, oh, the phone's not ringing, what's happening? Okay, let's just, I don't know. I, I don't really understand how it works. <laughs> All that I know is if you don't do stuff to it, you don't get as many calls as if you're right, like right. fidgeting and adding pictures and getting reviews. Reviews is huge for me. Um, I don't know how many reviews I have, but the reviews I do have are really, really good. And people will call me just because of the reviews. Um, awesome. Well, it sounds like it's working. Okay, very good. Thanks, Mar Thanks Marissa. So sure. let's keep, so... If you haven't taken advantage of the matching program, talk to Becky about that. You know, we, we'd love to get more and more people on this, but this is a way to, if you haven't done it before, it's a way to, to dip your toe and, and try it out. And for those of you who are in it, if you'd like to expand what you're doing, um, you know, it's a, it's a good way to tap into those dollars. So well, I want to- One other thing, I, I'm going to jump in here if that's okay, Matt, on one yeah. other note. Um, for the, the matching program, um, you know, even if you're not necessarily running your advertising campaign through our campaigns, um, still link those things up to our dashboard so that Matt can um, see the reporting numbers and, and can help you guys out with the, the matching program there. Yep, I'm glad you brought that up. So that's, uh, you don't have to use Adplor. We, we, we think they're awesome, but if you want to do it on your own or you have another source, that's fine. Um, so if they want to do that, should they just get with Becky as well as far as getting that connected? Yes, reach out to Becky and we'll make sure that um, we can plug in your existing campaigns into um, our reports. Awesome. Um, okay, yeah, there's a question. How do we link that up? So. Um, yeah, I would just, again, reach out to Becky and she'll get you connected. All right, so I want to touch on the websites. Um, we've been working with Adplor on you know, improving uh, the search you know, options on it. And so I sent out an email or the newsletter. I, I, I share some of this content, but I know 
Becky's been reaching out to each of you, but really we're looking to enhance the content, but also make more local content and rewriting some of these sections. And so this is something I shared with the FAC on Friday, but there are areas that you can, you can um, update on the websites. Uh, we put in some generic content for everyone, um, but you can, you can change these things. And so this is the generic copy. Um, I, I used Houston because they had gone in and updated this. So, so Becky, is this one of, this is one of the areas, correct, that you are looking to, to change? Yeah, so I have uh, responses from eight franchisees. Um, I would love to get everyone on board so that you can fill it with um, information that's specific to your location and to you personally as the owner. Um, so yeah, I don't think Houston has um, sent me their stuff yet, but yeah, I'd love to. Well, get I'm just showing you. Know, that's just an example of being able to edit, and and you know the other the about us. This is this is real generic stuff. I don't think you guys want to talk about your management teams in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, so I think you can you can change the video, you can change the content, but uh, there was if you take a look at the newsletter from Friday, there's a form that they can fill out, and then you'll work with them. And, and it's not only that, but it's also the services that you're going to be updating as well. And so should they also, and I guess we're also, the thought is to add a, some more local information like cities that they serve and things like that. So looks like those are all things that can help. Um, well, Adpour, uh, any, any questions for Adpour before the, they break? No, all right. Well, Adpour, thank you very much. I appreciate it. We will be in Thanks, touch. Man. Yes. So HubSpot is sorry, sorry, name. Matt. Just a quick question. So um before we get into HubSpot on the on the website content, uh right. what you, you mentioned you're rolling out some changes that th those eight franchises, including us, have updated. What when, when is that gonna happen? We're doing it right like today. So we're okay. going back and forth. So it's gonna happen today, tomorrow. Okay. Okay, good. I just want to look out for those changes. Yep. Thank you. Yep. So I'll post something when it's ready. Uh, all right. So Pratt, I'm going to make you my co-host. So you can now, if you want to share your screen, go to the bottom, hit the green button. So let's see. I'm going to ask. You see it, Pratt? You're on mute. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. All righty. And now you should be able to see a HubSpot uh, list of names. You guys see that? Yes, and I, I put in the chat, if you can put in, if let us know if you're using HubSpot. I, I think Laura Lee uses it and anyone else, if, if you're not using HubSpot, let us know which other one you're using, if you're using a CRM of some type. Okay, um, well, uh, yeah, Matt asked me just to kind of uh, give a short little run through about uh, the capabilities of HubSpot here. We, in Houston, we've been using it really right at three years. We started it up in March of 2020. And uh, we previously had been using Zoho to manage our CRM and uh, project management as well as email uh, uh, management or you know newsletter management. But it was getting a little too clunky for us as our CRM grew. So we spent quite a bit of time looking at various options and ended up choosing HubSpot for a number of reasons. Um, it's just, uh, you know, it's, it's an online software you can download. It's a subscription software. And for what the capabilities we have, uh, we pay $106 a month for it. Um, you know, Junie and Shelly and I are the three main users, <clears throat> but we like it because it integrates a lot of things and uh, just makes our project management easier. But the CRM screen that you're looking at now is free. Like, you, you know, this, this is kind of the, 
the foundation of everything HubSpot does is this free CRM. So you can just subscribe. You don't have to pay anything for this. And you can see, you know, you have a list of your, your contact people there with a bunch of metadata about them. Um, and can, you know, if you want to dive a little bit deeper, you can go in and pick a contact and click on them and have, you know, just a ton of what HubSpot calls properties or metadata about those people that you is free edit. It also tracks all of the activity we've had with them, including any emails that we send. Um, you know, if there's just little notes that we take, if you have any specific tasks related to this person, um, you can enter them there for the, I use this a lot if I want to follow up with somebody in say 30 days. Um, that's an easy thing for me to do. But then also here, it's got all the deals that this lady Debbie Levine has done with us or projects, HubSpot calls them uh, deals. But, um, and I'll show you a little bit more about that later for project management. But um, of course, from this CRM, we also um, have um, our, we do all of our newsletter monthly email marketing from this. And the, Junie is the bigger user of this than me because she kind of uh, uh, looks at all of the emails that she sends out, but you can track them here, get a little video of them, get some the data about them, manage your mailing list because we send our emails to, we kind of break our mailing list out we have several lists that we send to different groups, right? People who are our raving fans and people who were just trying to get in the door with them the first time uh, have a different look. But one of the numbers I like is that you can see how many time, how much time people are spending looking at your email. So in this case, 45% of the risk of the people who opened it spent more than eight seconds looking at it. So, you know, that's a number I track for my KPIs. You know, what level of interest are we getting here? They're, are they just opening it, deleting it, or what are they doing there? So this is the kind of tracking that I think my Emma and most of them do. But, you know, you can also see what links are getting hit the most. And you can also see your most engaged contacts, like who opened it the most times. Um, and, you know, that's a potential lead list for you to call, like all three of Actually, all four of those people are, are frequent clients or uh, people that are very interested in us. We work with a lot. So, um, so Pratt, a couple of questions sure. I'm sure we're getting to all these. So Laura Lee is saying she uses the paid version. It's much more robust. So you mentioned a free version. I guess that's the CRM. The, yeah. The um, Let me see here. I think if you go to... So there are there 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 is a paid version. Of, so I'm using free CMS tools, but you can also upgrade to a paid version. Uh, there's other service and operational tools. We have the marketing, and the uh, they call it the sales hub starter that um, I can show you here. But uh, I'm not sure if Laura Lee's talking about the. Uh, just the CRM portion. Laura Lee, can you share which, which things you're using? Can't hear you, Laura Lee. Sorry, took me a minute to get to my mute button. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> we have the, um, I believe it's the sales and marketing uh, first tier. And it's right at like 120 a month, I think. Um, and we are able to link up like our emails and really keep track of all of the um, communication that we have between um, our agents and um, Laura. And I wish she could be on the call, but she's got a real bad cough today. Um, to, or she could go over, you know, what the paid version looks like. Mm -hmm. Laura Lee, 
Mm -hmm. um, for the email execution, do you, does that have to originate from HubSpot or does it link up with your Google Mail? It links up with Google Mail. Yes, that is correct. You can just, uh, you can link this to Google Mail to do it automatically, or you can, um, you can choose to do it manually. If you're sending out an email, you can just CC HubSpot uh, they, and it'll automatically log the email for you. Uh, but on the email though, doesn't it start tracking all of your email then? Or did you create a, a, a separate email that you link this to? No, you, what you do is like Junie has done it with her email, her, you know, jrodriguez at, at showhomes.com. So pretty much any email she sends or receives um, kind of automatically gets into this tracking. Um, I am have an old timer's fear of Google, so I haven't done that. I do mine manually. I only log the ones that are related to the projects that I want to reserve. So, um, but you can do it either way. Okay. But yeah, it, it is it is very handy to, especially when you're following up on, uh, you know, you basically we use this. We can see any of the activity that we've previously had with a person, and also too, um, the one thing one thing that's kind of nice is you can see, um, uh, Debbie may not get our newsletter anymore, but uh, if we go back one, let's find somebody who's, uh... go down here, somebody who's been in a while. This one probably won't. Sorry, I'm just looking for one. Cause you, the other thing you can do here is see the, uh, people who are like, I'm just randomly clicking on people because they're marketing contact contacts here. But uh, so she has signed up for our newsletter from the last one. And so she's pretty new, but it'll also give you a list of, uh, uh, let's see. No. On a lot of these, when I bring them up, you can see the list of all the emails they've recently received, uh, how they if if they opened them or not, et cetera. So this re, this lady just recently signed up, and so I don't know her yet. So I want to make sure we're getting all the questions. So there's a question regarding duplicate entry, and then someone asked integration with Friend Man. I, I will say. Uh, we've been holding off on doing any integrations with Framam just because there's so many different CRMs, but we're getting so many people who are starting to use HubSpots. We started to do some integration right now. So if we get more people, we could definitely add it to uh, Framam. Aaron mentioned uh, that there are integrates, integrations with HubSpot and Miami. So you, you can connect those right now. So um, Laura Lee says she's going to move to Proposify, which integrates with HubSpot. I mean, I think they all, Hub, HubSpot's an open API, so they can integrate with just about any of these systems. Oh, yeah, it could. And, and, and in fact, just FYI, the, the most important link in HubSpot that it uses off that CRM is their email address. So if you've, you know, if we've got the email address in, um, Fran Man or My Emma or any of the others that you use, that's that would be the hook that you'd probably want. Hey, Pratt, I need to, I made you the main host. I, I should have made you the co-host because people are trying to get in here. So I'm going to disable you for a second. Um, hold on. And then I'm going to have you go back in. Hey, Laura, I have Laura asked to get back in. So hold on. Let me. Change. Oh, our chat numbers come. I can't because I can't see the chat box. It's behind me right now. Well, yeah. So that's why I'm okay. Not joined. Let's see. Hold on. Uh, Do I need to stop share? Well, I, I stopped it for oh, okay. you. So because I needed to, I need to make you a way. Actually. 
Hey, can you stop sharing for a second? Okay, there you go. All right, so now you need to make eh. <laughs> For some reason, you've become the host. Can you make me the co-host? I don't know. Let's have a vote on that. <laughs> How do you're going to have to walk me through it? I like your banner that says "Come and take it." So he's taking my <laughs> Zoom access. Damn it! What do I need to do here? I think you have to click by my name on the joined. Yeah. You see the list of people and make me co-host. I'm going to make you the co-host. Okay. There you go. Okay. So I've got. All right. So. Why don't you go ahead and share your screen again? Okay. Okay. So, you know, we kind of talked about marketing. We we use it mainly for the email, and and that's something we pay. You know, our total billing a month is one hundred and six dollars for three users. And one of the things we have is this email marketing. And we talked about that. But the other one, and this was a big reason that we wanted it was for the what they call the uh, sales hub. And this is the thing that I that we use for all of our project management. So these are the deals that are currently active for us and we you know you can customize this to however you want it to look but we use it to show our our uh, prospect funnel right so you know kind of from initial contact clear through closed one inventory deployed and you know the final dis disposition of them you know they're either complete or we lose the job and you know we've talked before about how I track um, even jobs we don't win so that I can track their sales history. This is where I do all of that. So, you know, we can look at a project, um, like just grab one here. Um, I just asked a poll for, yeah. for you guys. So we're multitasking. Do you use a CRM, HubSpot, other CRM, or you don't use one? So if you could vote real quick i think that would be good to see where everyone is so again this is just uh you know the the deal page so we're able again to see all of the emails and photos and stuff when we destage this we always send them here's where your key is etc uh so this is a job we recently finished um again all kinds of metadata about it the date we signed the contract all, all of the stuff that Fran man asked for um, and in fact, I set that up kind of purposefully so I could just do a copy and paste from here, um, which, by the way, all this data is exportable into a spreadsheet or anything you want to do and importable into most softwares, but not Franman. Um, but I also track the, the sale process, like how much was it, how much did it initially list for, when did it list, when did it for sale, when did it sell all that. It also connects to all the people I could click her and we'd go right back to our contacts list. She's in our CRM. Um, but one thing I kind of like about it is, you know, here's just a, a copy of our staging proposal and a copy of our, the, the service agreement we signed with them. So all of that <clears throat> is readily available to us. Um, and of course, all of these things you can filter on them like I use this quite a bit um, you can look at it in different uh, formats if you'd like if you want to do it if you're <coughs> in a tabular view so so but this is you know both all of us use the CRM um, I'm the main user of this sales process although uh, Junie and Shelly put a lot of information in here like just little things like when they tell us, uh, oh, yeah, we're going to have the key for you hidden somewhere. You know, what's our access to the property? All of the, you know, any little notes and information that we need are in here. So. <laughs> Unless you got questions, that's all I was. Oh, you can also uh, do some reporting. And is it under here? No. Dashboards. That's what I'm looking at. So you can see all kinds of 
you know, different, you can choose to customize this however you want to, to show different things how you're doing. Yeah, whenever I do any statistics, Pratt will immediately send me some cool charts with their <laughs> which is kind of cool. By the way, so the poll, I just, did you, did you guys see the results? Okay, I just shared them. Okay, so it looks like a 31% use HubSpot, 38% use another kind of CRM, and then a third, 31% don't use a CRM. So I'll be honest, I've been using a CRM for franchise sales for years. I don't see how you can manage a business without some kind of CRM, just trying to do it with a notebook and spreadsheet. So <laughs> I, mean, I guess you could technically, but I would think is this... <laughs> This would save you a lot of time. Um, so what questions do you guys have, whether, you know, about HubSpot or is there a CRM you're using that you really like or, you know, just questions in general about this topic? John Aaron, do you use a CRM? You're on mute. John, how about you in Dallas? You're you're muted. Sorry, uh, we just started using Salesforce. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Salesforce was one re that was kind of our number two when we looked at this, but it it was my feeling about Salesforce was it was better adapted to use you know to be a potential replacement for Franman like a bigger corporate thing. It was a little, it could do more than we needed at the time but I think it's a good software too. Yeah, I agree. I think um, it's kind of more than we need, but since uh, I'm clueless about that kind of thing and my sales manager is also <laughs> uh, had to kind of rely on somebody who knew how to do that stuff. And Kim here um, has worked with Salesforce for many, many years. So I'm relying on him to kind of get us going. Yeah, I think I that's if if we were to migrate away from HubSpot today, that would probably be the number one that we would look at is Salesforce. So Chris Gulliver, how about you in San Diego? Did you did you say that you're using a version of this or a free version or something? Yes, we we use the the free version, but uh, but we'll, we'll, I'm seriously looking at the paid version, especially after that. So uh, after this call, I'm curious. To, see how um uh you know how, how it's worked and it seems like it's worked well for pratt i guess one of the biggest things that since you know since we have now me lisa and mark our uh, third salesperson so three of us you know we need we need three users and to be able to track all that the biggest thing and, and i've used you know various crms over my career is the discipline to enter in the, the information it's, it's easy to uh, get ahead of yourself and not um, enter in uh, the information as you go through the sales process. So just wonder how that's going for Pratt and maybe Laura League because um, you know it, it. You really you know it's it's the old uh, you know garbage in garbage out. You you have to get the data in there and you have to be disciplined to track it. How how is that going for you guys? Because I know that's a big <laughs> a, a big challenge um, in when using these kinds of things. Well, it's, it's funny because of, of we, we basically, you know, it's been three years now, so it's kind of just built into our process, but there's certain things like often uh, I'm the first person to put in a new contact. Um, Junie frequently does, like when we teach a course or something, you know, she enters the, the people who attended the course, but um, because I, and Chris, I think you and I do it kind of similarly. I'm using the one that I'm usually the person who, uh, you know, gets negotiates the contracts together and get all that part of it done um, before Shelly really kind of takes over with the design side. So it's usually me inputting the new deals and tracking them through the, the prospect funnel or the lead funnel, whatever you want to call it. But um, we set it up and uh, uh, Junie kind of is the one behind, under the hood on this, but there are a number of things that are required entries, right? Like the 
the zip code, the the address of the home, uh, the pe the people who are the uh, linked contacts, like who who are we dealing with here, and then um, uh, you know there's some other information that I require that basically is all the the only reason I require it is because Franman requires it when I eventually am going to go and manually enter all this crap by hand into Franman at the end of the month. Um, the, uh, you know, I just want those uh, properties to be filled. <clears throat> and then it automatically, a lot of the, of the dates that you can put it, you know, we have built up drop down menus for the dates. And, to, and also for things like uh, the role of the person, you know, we, we basically created a drop down menu. This is either a realtor broker, a homeowner, a builder, you know, something to make, to make you need, if it's a database, you need consistency, right? Um, so you can't have one people, one person saying seller and another person saying homeowner. So we just, uh, you know, kind of locked in and restricted our choices on a number of those to, you know, four or five things. Okay. Thank you. That's good. Um, Laura Lee, how about you? How have you dealt with this? Because I think that's really the key question because we've had CRMs before and what ends up happening is it just, people don't enter the data into it and it's just wasted technology. So you need, frankly, uh, you know, we talked about EOS and tool traction tools you got your visionary, then you got your integrator. You got to have someone who owns it and is a pain in the neck and bugs people to enter stuff, frankly, or it's not going to happen. Uh, um, so, Laura Lee, how have you been able to get people to use it and make sure it's used regularly? Um, well, Laura is the one that enters the data. So I'm going to give her credit for that. And she is very disciplined about that every time she has a conversation or sends an email, obviously it loads in there. So um, she's she's the one solely responsible for that data. Um, she did want me to mention that one of the best parts of HubSpot is the tasks sections, mm -hmm. um, which you can prioritize and sort into queues so you know what needs to be done on each deal every day. Um, and that's also a part of the discipline, you know, is, is having that organization ahead of you. She says she can talk, but she sounds a little rough because she's got a cough. So, Laura, do you want to do you want to jump in? I don't think she could speak. Am I unmuted now? <laughs> yeah, we can hear you. Forgive my voice. I apologize. <clears throat> um, I use HubSpot religiously because, <laughs> excuse me, because I like to see when I talk to an agent, I like to go into HubSpot and see every activity I've had with that agent, whether it be a, a, a proposal that they declined or deals we've done and how long ago and what deal it was. And I think they get a real, um, they get a good sense that we, we are treating them like a premier client when I can bring up a deal we did a year ago and how quickly it closed and just have everything I need in front of me um, working with that client, which I think is, a, is the whole point of a good CRM. But I really use HubSpot more as, as my, you know, tracking, like Laura Lee was saying, I can go in every day and just go to tasks and say, oh, okay, what's, what's a high priority? What's in my active deal queue? What's in my, um, you know, proposed deal queue? What, you know, what, who, what agents I need to reach out to that, that I haven't gotten a deal from in a while? So it's really a very hardy system. And I don't even think we're using, we're probably not even using a quarter of the features, but we really just wanted to get a feel for this and make sure it, it you know, it, it was good with our flow before we start doing marketing. But I think the marketing piece of it, it if we decide to go to that at some point, will integrate so nicely with the sales part. Um, it's just, I, I just, it, it's kind of everything in one place and everything I need and it keeps me accountable. It keeps me on track, keeps me taking care of tasks before they, you know, I, I have reminders like check in with this agent and make sure they um, are getting, you know, how, how are your, how are your um, showings going? What are, what's the feedback on the staging? What's the feedback on the, you know, just touch, making sure I'm touching all my um, agents throughout the entire process, which keeps, you know, they, they're just, they really like that 
um, kind of extra touch. Yeah, Laura, let me, I want to reiterate what you said about when you talk to people, like when I talk to them on the phone, that's the first thing I do is I bring them up and say, you know, see what past interactions we've had. And you'd be amazed how often, you know, I can say something like, oh yeah, we, we talked to you guys about, we talked to you, we, you and I spoke six months ago on about your house on 29th Avenue, you know, and they're like, oh yeah. And so it, it kind of creates a, a bond with them right there. But what we're talking about it to address that question, Matt, you brought up is it's not a static database. We're using it every day. Like it, HubSpot is up on my screen all day, every day. You know, when I answer a call, when I, when I get a call from a realtor, the first thing I do is look them up and find out something about them. And before I even call them back. So it's, uh, but, but because of habit, right? Yeah, it, it just you come in, your, you open up your Outlook, you open up Fran Man, I open yeah. up, you know, my CRM, and it's just mm -hmm. it's part of what you do. Now, uh, Pratt is is like Bird, is about as high as C personality. If you guys remember, Disc <laughs> is out there. So, Laura Lee is Laura a high C. Have you had her do Disc? Laura is a high C, right, Laura? Okay. I believe so. Okay. It's been a it's been a couple of years since we did that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're okay. Well, I'm pretty sure you're a high C. So Chris, I would not put Lisa in charge of this operation. I don't think that would happen. So, and I don't know about Mark. I know you're a high C. You're kind of a hybrid, but you're higher on the C. So, and, and right. you, no, you're right, Matt. But I mean, be, be, because she's a sales person, and also we have Mark, uh, you know, responsible for sales. You know, we have to realize the importance of tracking, you know, our, our sales. And this is, a, you know, it's a great way to do that. And um, you really need to to uh, track all the communication with 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 each one, you know, tasks and reminders and things like that. Um, and all in one place. That's what I like about this, too. Right. It's, everything's all in one place because, uh, you know, we've got emails, we've got uh uh, we've got email campaigns through Emma. We've got this and that. So to track the contacts all in one place is really key. But I think the point is somebody's got to own it. Like yeah. And so, it. yeah. So, so, so I would, you know, who owns yeah. It. So in our, our company, I would set it up and then, you know, we just have to make sure it's in the process so that Mark and Lisa uh, enter in their, their, all their, uh, contacts in there so it just has to be part of the process to, to get it done you will just have to be the nag to make sure yeah if, um done. you know shelly all the time comes home oh i spoke to such and such today and while she's telling me that i'll enter it in hubspot right then right so so we get it caught up because shelly's not the person that you want to have in i can say this safely because she's on an appointment right now but uh shelly's not the person that we want to have enter in our data in hubspot that's not how she thinks so yeah hey that's a good point pat did do you have a mobile version did uh, how's yeah that you work? can uh you can get onto this online and i don't really i'm sure you can i don't do much data entry from hubspot to to hubspot when I'm out and about, but it's real handy when you're out doing some stuff, like you can look up any of this data on your phone really easily to see, oh shoot, where did we put the lockbox on that house? You know, um, if it's not where we would normally place it, uh, where is it you can find out, or if there's a realtor lockbox with a certain key code, you can look up that or, uh, the phone number of the of the seller if you can't remember the alarm code or he's changed it all of so this. so Aaron has patiently had her hand up for around 20 minutes I'm sorry Aaron I should have got okay. that doesn't work here and you just got to yeah, speak just up. speak up all right so what's your question um I put it in the chat as well but what is the hold up with uploading the information to Fran man if you have it set up similarly that seems like a, a lot of duplicative efforts, which I think Nancy asked yeah. earlier as well. well a couple is that one, exchange of effort? And, yeah, there's a couple a couple of things. One, one of the things I was going to touch on uh, in a minute, we've been working on, we've never had a real big integration program with Franman. And so our efforts have been on the QuickBooks integration because that's that's what takes up the bulk of time. And so we're, we're finishing that up and that's been a huge project. Um, we also didn't have any real consensus on a CRM. So there's a million CRMs and there's a flavor of the month, it seems like all the time. 
But as HubSpot seems to be what we're hearing more and more people using, then it's a matter of we've just now started to add some different features people are asking. So uh, sorry, I wasn't it. really asking about a native integration. I was more saying even just the export and import. What was the challenge there to import like a downloaded CSV? I don't think there's an issue. We just haven't done it, frankly. I mean, we have an open API, so we could, could we could connect any of these programs to it. It's just a matter of writing it. You mentioned Zapier, so using something like that. And so that's, you know, we're, we've been focusing on a specific big project. So it's it's on our list of things to do. So for sure. So, all right, I've got people asking me to move on. <laughs> They're busy. Uh, so if you haven't tried HubSpot, check it out. It's, you know, it, there's a free version. And, you know, I I strongly suggest you try to keep your data in a CRM of some type. But it sounds like this could be a good conference conversation for sure. All right. We're going to go to the lightning round. I'm going to show you some quick things just so you're aware of some tools that are available now and some things that I've seen that are kind of cool. Um, the let's see okay let me make sure okay so we now have the ability and this is something Lee and Gemma asked us to do so realtors will web inquiries will you're still going to get an email but you can also through Twilio send a um, text and this is in Fran man I forget exactly where it may be in franchise admin this one goes to Ali and to Monica. So you can have multiple people who get copies of this. So um, we think that's kind of cool. So that's one piece. Um, if you've not added uh, Profit Keeper to your um, Fran Man, we think that's something that would be, it's a good thing just to have it there kind of as a reminder of where you are. And again, Franchise Admin, you'll just need to enter your uh, profit keeper code that, um, that if you need help with that, let us know. But that's that's a new another cool tool. Uh, the QuickBooks CRM integration. We've got um, is Nancy still on the line? Nancy, are you? I I'm think here. you're one of the guinea pigs on this, correct? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. <clears throat> and are, are you? St I know there's a new chart of accounts we've been tweaking, but uh, have you, do you have any update on this on, on your, since you're one of the testers? Um, there's still quite a few glitches we're trying to work out. Um, it, it, the way that it creates the, the client is sometimes confusing, but we're trying to. Oh, we lost. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, okay. We lost okay. you for a sec. Okay. It has a it has a glitch in there as far as how the uh, taxes are done sometimes. So we're still working out some and tweaking some things on it. But I I really do like it. I think it'll make the invoice process a whole lot quicker if it can just automatically pick it up and pick it up correctly. Okay. So we're really focused on getting this done and so we're going to be adding some beta, additional beta users so we'll we'll communicate more when we're ready to, to do that so we're we're getting close uh fran funnel is a tool that we've been using for a couple of years i used it in franchise sales uh, for several years and then and we've gotten several franchisees who use it um Matt. yes this is monica from philadelphia I just had a quick question on the, on the integration between Fran Man and QuickBooks. Okay. Is the way that it's getting set up being tested with someone who's not using Jamie Lynn? Is there anyone in the test group that's not with Jamie Lynn? Not currently, because she's been helping us out with our chart of accounts. So. I know, and, and I just fear that for those of us who aren't using her for our accounting, that it's not going to work. You know, there's going to be more glitches. Um, excuse me, we don't use them in Show Homes Raleigh. Well, you don't have your part. We have, no, you we don't have, have our own accountant and our own bookkeeper. Yeah, I mean, you don't right. have to use Jamie. We're not saying you have to use Jamie Lynn. So. Well, everybody else seems to use them, and 
everybody's you know new charter of accounts and everybody's being integrated well, and no, then, no we've only no, integrated no. We've, we've only done one person so we're not okay Okay. Yeah, so, All right. yeah, so we're going to add, we'll add so if you want to be on the beta test one of the next users sure let us know and we'll add you I, yeah no i didn't really i was hoping somebody else would would pony up but <laughs> um <laughs> but um oh, yeah, yeah that's just my concern is that we're going to have glitches once we roll it out to everyone if it's done for a specific set of rules okay well that, that's why this is taking us quite a bit of time trying to get everyone you know to get one chart of accounts and get everyone uh connected. <laughs> so that's uh that will probably be a separate call to to cover so but uh, I'll know more you know hopefully for our next call so let's see uh all right so aaron says they would be happy to to try their they're they're using a different cpa so we'll 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 bring in additional people so that's that's a fair good feedback okay so back to tools to help your business so fran funnel is a texting program and it's it's an automated system and so if this is just an example of uh portland uh, if you get a, an inquiry from Franman or even through, um, if you're using Answer Force, they'll get a. Um, oh, sorry about that. They will get an automated text saying, "Thanks for reaching us. You know, what's a good time to talk?" But what, what's interesting is how many people are using text instead of talking on the phone. And as I look through, I think we have around six franchises who use this right now. Um, and it's like the whole process goes through this and it just goes on and on. They're sharing photos and documents. And, um, you know, again, this is something that's, um, I think this is going to be one of the things, and you're probably seeing this just in your personal lives. People will respond to text and not answer the phone. So uh, they gave us a, a deal at $49 a month when we started and then, you know, they, they raised it to 99, but um, I found another company that could be lower. So I'm, I'm looking to see if uh, we can find a, a better deal kind of what's clearly a, a concern, but so Monica, since you're on there, I think you and Allie use this program, correct? Do you have any, any feedback on it? You still there? Did you jump off? I am here. I am sorry, okay. muted. Okay. Um, yes, we do use Fran Funnel, and we it's fifty dollars a month for anyone curious on the price. And we have it set up. We actually did a couple of things. Um, one, we have it set up so that we use Answer for us as well to answer field all of our calls coming in on the main number. And um, the people in Answer Force go through a script now that we created, and actually it can be modified for every location. That was how we planned it. But basically, they ask all the minimum questions and commentary that's required for um, scoring at least a satisfactory score on the um, mystery shot. And then also, if it's a you know, very specific criteria that if it's a hot lead, basically, so somebody who's calling is a realtor or a homeowner, and they are ready to move forward, and they need to get pricing, or they're you know they're they're going to be within the next two weeks, their property is going to be ready for staging, then they'll warm transfer the call to Ali or I. Um, if we can't answer, that's when that lead will get a text from Fran Funnel. That basically says, "Hi, this is Ali, and um, you know, when can we? I'd love to talk to you. Can't talk right now, kind of thing. When can we set something up?" So Laura Lee uses it in Charleston. She says, and "Laura Lee, I don't know if you're still on there, but I think you you mentioned on our FAC call you like it because you can see the conversations that are going on with your salespeople, and you have a history of the documentation." So. Right. It's um because we're a team effort, you know, and if someone's in an appointment and um a call comes in, uh one of us can call back because that um text conversation comes in the email. So, you know, we're always kind of covering each other's um 
tracks to make sure that it, no lead goes unanswered. And so for me, um, whether the lead comes in to levitate or the website or to answer force, every single call is coming into my email. So, you know, if I know Laura's doing a presentation or she's working on something, or maybe she's just not working, um, you know, I can pick that up, even though all the texts actually go to her phone, I can see everything in my email. That's awesome. Uh, I know Catherine said she had like a 25% connect rate when in the past with leads and now it's just like over 90%. And I can tell you the same thing for franchise development. It's just, honestly, I lean a lot harder on text than phone right now uh, for at least initially connecting with someone, but just throughout the process, I, I found it really helpful. So, um, but yeah, I'll, if you have an interest in Fran Funnel, reach out to me. Um, I think it's a no brainer and can be a huge tool. Okay, so I showed this sales script to the FAC on Friday. I said, uh, oh wait, there's a question, let's see. Okay, and I was like, I came up with a sales script. What do you think of this? And you know, it's not perfect, but they're like, well, I have some, a few pieces, but pretty good. Well, I didn't write this. I plugged this into chat GPT, which I don't know who's using it or not, but it wrote it in around 10 seconds. And so this is a free tool. And the more I use it, it's like mind boggling, frankly. Uh, I was just, uh, you know, this thing in Vegas, Bert and I, with this big conference, this was the hot buzz. I mean, there was a, con there was a meeting and a session on it and pe people were lining up at the hallway. And so if you wanted to, to do a Facebook post and it pulls something that's pretty darn good. Uh, you know, I've had people who told me that they, they said, write a speech for me for this printing conference. And it wrote a 40 minute speech. And then he asked, give me slides with appropriate graphics for it. And it did that too. Cool you know, what's it called? Said, what's that? What's it called? Chat. GPT? Yeah, hold on. Yeah, let me show you a second. So I wanted to figure out margin on a $5,000 job to put in all the, the different uh, um, calculations. So it's chat.openai.com. So, so if I said write an email to a realtor, about reasons to use show homes, home staging services. Oh, I got an error for some reason. Oh, great. Uh, well, either way. But here, let's try a different one. Okay. Eh, but either way, it does work. So, I, you know, I've talked to a couple of different people. I think uh, Liliana, whose English is not her first language, has, has had luck with it. Um, is is a it rewrites her stuff. Um, in, in, let's see, Aaron says. Chat GPT is breaking the advertising world, coming from someone who just left the big agency. It's insane. Uh, uh, you asked me how much is it? It's free. I can just tell you, it's of all, all the things I've seen in, in technology in the last few years, this is the thing that's mind boggling. They're saying this is like this, you know, other than the internet, this is the hottest thing. And it's like you've hired a free staffer i mean this thing it's passed it went in and passed the bar in california i mean it is kind of frankly kind of scary but uh, i would suggest all of you guys download and start playing around with chat gpt i mean just for it it's it's kind of shocking i'm not an expert on it but i can tell you it is uh very cool and there's a lot of other artificial intelligence there's a thing called otter i i AI, 
O-T-T-E-R, and it can take, you know, if you have a meeting with your team, it can take you your notes, it can put together slides, summaries, if you did a sales call, it could put all this together. So artificial intelligence is is a hot thing right now. And Matt, it's going to- Tying in with uh, our conversation earlier about uh, uh, driving your web traffic with uh, frequent updates and photos of your work. Uh, one thing that really impressed me was chat GPT generated a, narrative to go with a particular staging job. Hmm. Yeah, you wonder, you know, in the future, is it going to be able to post face, you know, do your social media posts for you? Will it be able to, uh, you know, upload the pictures? I mean, it's just, <laughs> I know we're using a, a virtual assistant right now. You wonder, could it take over that virtual assistant job? So it's, it is going to, it has caught on really fast. And you heard Aaron talk about it, but it's just, I'm telling you, uh, get up to speed on it. Um, next thing I want to cover, I saw several people with these remarkable pads and it's these, this is kind of a slick notebook where it will, um, you can take notes, upload it, uh, to your team, upload, you know, it can convert it to text, but it can also take your drawings and convert them. Um, but I share this with the FAC, but there's also, you can do this with your iPad. And so the, the Remarkable is pretty cool. It's around 300 bucks, so it's not cheap, but um, is Leanne, Leanne, you're still there. What's, what's the tool? Was it Notely or something like that? Uh, it's an app called Notably, which Notably. I haven't tried yet, but I watched a real estate agent trying it. So I was going to get it, but it's, it's, um, handwriting recognition and note taking on an iPad. So I would, you know, one of the FAC members mentioned being able to do, you know, take notes like at a job on a staging and then upload, you know, upload it and share it with your teams and, um, I think this one's very cool. And so, you know, I think most of you have iPads, but has, has anyone taken advantage of this type of technology? And if, you're not, if you haven't, check it out. It's uh, another thing that I think it could be very, very cool. So oh, I have a chat, let's see. Let's see, Pratt says, I've seen the Notably app too. Very cool, handy for a quick sketch of a home and notes during the first walkthrough. So yeah, so I think that's, that may be worth something to consider in those walkthroughs. So, all right guys, so is there some technology you guys are using or a tool or something that you'd like to share with the group or questions about anything we've covered so far? All right. Well, uh, I hope you got some good information today and appreciate the time. And so I'll be sharing the recording and the, the presentation in the near future. And so have a good week and uh, we'll talk soon. Thanks, guys. All right. Bye.